Welcome, friends, to Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. We bring you the greatest female voices in the music industry, from the artists, songwriters, and producers, to managers and executives, and all the women who make the music industry what it is today. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, friends, to another episode of Crazy Women Country. I'm Donna. I'm Paula, and today we have Kay Johnson with us. How are you doing? Hey guys, I'm great. Thank you guys so much for having me. No problem. No problem. Thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Glad to do it. So tell all our Crazy Women fans, who is Kelly Johnson? Goodness, how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, I started writing songs at the age of eight. I sang my first time when I was four. So I just really just have always, music has been a huge part of my life, but I never really thought about pursuing it as a career until my early 20s. And I literally walked on stage, sang with a, a bar band there in Anniston, Alabama, and got hired on the spot. And from then on, I was hooked. I was like, I can make money doing this. I'm never going to stop. So, <laughs> And over the years, you know, I've done many different things so that I could keep music in the forefront. Um, but three years ago, my husband and I moved to Nashville, Tennessee to prefer to pursue songwriting um, instead of the artistry being the primary goal and primary focus. We focused on writing songs for other artists and with other songwriters and things like that. And it's, you know, when you know where you're, <laughs> when you're where you're supposed to be, everything just kind of runs smoothly and you just have a joy in life. And that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I just love life right now. <laughs> So who's one of your favorite uh, cuts that you've had? Like one of the people. Oh goodness. I recently, my most recent cut is with an amazing woman named Allie Colleen. She is like this. She's like my best friend, but she recorded an album. um, Stones is the name of it. And she's got a single called playing house. And I think she just released stones. I have a cut on that called as good as it gets. And so I'm super excited about that. She's just, one of my faves, but then an amazing artist as well. So when you get to hear an amazing artist do your music that you've written and you also get to be friends with them, it's just the best of both worlds. So, Absolutely. I can definitely agree there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love that. That's very cool. Perfect. So who are some of the women that have inspired you to do music? Obviously, you've been doing it since you were so young, since about eight there, you said. So yeah. tell us, who are some of the women that have inspired you and inspire you daily? Like, um, I know, instance, you might have those classic people that always inspire you. It's not necessarily just country, you know, yeah, absolutely kind of helps <laughs> you to get where you are, you know? Yeah. Well, growing, growing up in Northeast Alabama, I was exposed to everything. Bluegrass, gospel, Southern gospel was some of the first music that I heard, I learned how to harmonize with my my mom and sisters in the car. So they were a huge influence. My older sister played bass and was in a couple of bands. And to me, that's just what we did, you know, and um, I'm the only one that kind of ever really took it as a profession. And so I I listened to everybody from Alison Krauss to Liam Womack. Aretha is one of my all-time favorites. Um, Some of my newer, like, of course, Ava and Allie, um, there's a group that I love called the Drys that I've just got to write with. And Caitlin Dry is, oh, she's just one of my favorite singers right now. And, you know, <laughs> they just had a, a release called White's Creek and it's gorgeous. But writing with those artists that are just so on fire for their music right now, it, it just lights a fire in me too. So, so, so as a, a songwriter now, let me ask the question. Um, and obviously as someone who's been in the artist forefront, what do you feel like when you write with an artist to just writing with songwriters that are not necessarily artists? Um, mm-hmm. well, how, what do you think it like, how do you feel? What's different? What's the same? I mean, sometimes mm-hmm. people say that songwriters are different than songwriters with an artist. So what's your take on yeah. that? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, everybody has their own personality. So each group you're going to get in, whether they're a group of artists or songwriters, there's going to be some quirks or differences. To me, when I'm in the room with an artist, I always want to hear what that artist has to say. Because to me, that's the reason I'm there is to help them get a song with their cut. That, I mean, honestly, as songwriters, we don't make money till an artist cuts our song. So if I have the, the great fortune to be in the room with an artist that 
is ready to write and wants to write songs they care about, I listen more than anything and just help guide and throw ideas out. Um, as opposed to when we're in the room with songwriters, it's like, well, who's cutting? Who, <laughs> who do you have access to get this to? Or who are we writing for? So usually if there's an artist in the room, I already know who I'm writing for. And, if, you know, if it's just songwriters where, hey, who's, who, who do you know that's looking for a song? And what do we need to write today? So, yeah. that's cool. Okay. Coming from someone who's not a songwriter, who just loves country music, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> not like my colleague here who's, you know. <laughs> 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 Knowing who you're writing for, does that make a big difference? It, isn't it just about the song or is it literally about the personality behind the song? Sometimes it is all about the song and I... Oh. <laughs> oh, I think we froze. I find those moments are when I have inspiration. I know you hear songwriters say, oh, sorry, did I freeze? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all right. That's oh. a good answer. That was great. <laughs> That's the best answer ever. I, you want me to just... <laughs> <laughs> that was my best one. Yeah. I forgot the question now. <laughs> Do you, okay, am I am I unfrozen now? It's, are we good? Yeah. Sorry You're about that, guys. Perfect. Cool. All righty. Well, the question was: When you're writing, obviously, when you're writing the song, is it just about the song, or because you know the person behind it? Do you write for their personality? Gotcha. You know. Gotcha. That great question, by the way. And, um, if I'm writing a song that just kind of those moments that you say God whispered it in your ear or it just you wrote it down in a few minutes, those are the ones that I let the song take the lead or the inspiration take the lead. And I kind of just when I get those, I've learned to stop, write them down and go as far as I can with them. Some I'll, I'll make a complete song. And these days I very rarely write by myself unless it just takes off and I'm just writing down. Most of the time I'll put that idea in a bank on my phone to take to the right so that I have ideas to, and then, yeah. you know, say we're writing a song for Eric Church. I think about what he has and I don't want to get too similar to that, but I, you know, kind of get his style from that. And then I also think about what he needs as far as, well, he hasn't done that. And I'm just on an Eric Church kick right now. Anyway, the J Joyce production is like, man, I've, I've listened to that all the way to Georgia and back this weekend. So I'm on fire for the production aspect of it. But usually I try to think of, say, if I'm writing for Miranda Lambert, I know it's going to be edgy. I know it's going to be in your face and just kind of that kind of thing. I try to think about the personality of who's going to be singing. And, and is this something they would truthfully say and yeah. come across as true? Because it's, it's always better when it's a real true story. So. Yeah. 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 That's perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Oh, okay. this is easy. Y'all are good at this. <laughs> making it easy for me. <laughs> they like to make it easy, seriously. Do you prefer to write with men or women? Or does it depend on the song? Depends on the song. I usually, I grew up as a tomboy. I played baseball. We didn't have softball for girls. I played drums in school. I was a rough, my, my dad had four girls before he finally had a boy. So we were all raised to be boys. So mm -hmm. I'm comfortable in the room with a bunch of guys that like to talk like guys or, you know, just throw guy ideas around. And I'm also very comfortable in a room with women or mix. It just kind of, I try to listen in any room and just see yeah. what, <laughs> what the room needs as much as what the song needs, you know, yeah. do, do they need a leader to step in and well, all right, guys, let's get it back together on track. We've been here for five hours and we have two lines, you know, <laughs> so sometimes you're the mom in the room, which I, I usually am the mom in the room. So <laughs> whether it needs it or not, I'll be the mom. So. <laughs> I'm sure the mom a little bit. <laughs> I love that. I write with a group of guys and they're, they're phenomenal. They're, they're just, they do their, like everyone seems to do our own parts and then they're like, mm -hmm. tweak this, give us other ideas. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, well, we know I only write lyrics. So that's where we stop at that. And, but yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, never say you only write lyrics. To, oh my goodness. The lyrics are the meat of it, you know? And my husband is, I don't know if he knows any lyric to any song that I've written. So he's a music man all the way. So, <laughs> so each is equally important to me. So. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You make, you make a good partnership. You write the lyrics, he writes the music. And just Absolutely. Play. Yeah. Well, he, he doesn't write. He's a great critiquer. He's, <laughs> he's, he's in it with me, but he's a music lover. He tried playing guitar and bass a little bit. And um, 
my standards were too high for him to play with me because I insisted on him playing in tune. So from then on, I was mean and he was done. So <laughs> we, don't, we don't partner very well, but <laughs> he's the support and I'm the, the work. So. Oh, oh, I love that. that that's, that's a great one. Oh. We've learned our roles. We, we've learned it and refined it. So. <laughs> That's very cool. <laughs> too, too, too demanding. Who no. <laughs> <laughs> needs to be in tune? I mean, that's yeah. so crazy. <laughs> Why would you watch that? He made an appearance. I saw him. Say hi. Say hi, everyone. Oh, <laughs> how precious. Well, she is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay. I'm going to send your life so as she, usual. One stitch. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And it's been kind of shame. You got that, like. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then she tries to like rub against my face with the cone on. It was hysterical. It doesn't work. Oops, there you go. Careful. She's like jumping. There we go. Yeah, like when they try and walk through doorways, it's like, Dum. it's like the doorway's this big and you're walking into the wall. How does that work? Oh. Okay, so this is the fun part. I love mm -hmm. this. So this is the quick fire questions now. These oh, are no. easy. Dead easy. It's okay. just for people to get to know. You a little better. That's all. Well, it's all good. Okay. Early bird or night owl? Depends. I usually am a night owl, uh, but I have to be an early bird most of the time. I'm not naturally. I'm, you know, like I still have a 16 year old son that I get up at six with and get him on the school bus. If I could, I'd sleep really late. <laughs> early bird out of necessity, naturally. Not Al. So. <laughs> what sitcom family would you be a member of? Sitcom family. I've just watched Shit's Creek and I love it. I'm like, I could fit in with those people. They're my kind of weird. So that one. <laughs> and it's probably because that's the latest thing. I also love Ozark and Jason Bateman. I, I, <laughs> the, that's a great series. I think I could fit in with those guys. I need to watch Shit's Creek because everybody's people keep hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. What's your guilty pleasure music? What's hidden away? Guilty word? pleasure music. Oh my goodness. Uh, I love this, the old 90s and 2000s Snoop Dogg stuff, the one he did with Limp Biscuit. I'll sometimes listen to that when I'm working out. Love blue. I literally listen to everything. I love bluegrass to Motown to rock. Um, you can't help but jam out the sweet child of mine in your car. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. What's the weirdest thing a fan has ever done for you? Um, the weirdest thing a fan has ever done for me. I don't think there's anything. I'm so weird myself. I don't know this weird right away. <laughs> I'm usually the awkward one that somebody's saying, you remember what she did? Um, uh, there was once a fan that got we were in this listening room small little uh, place in Springville Alabama called Local Color and we were playing a praise and worship song and a couple of my fans that had come to hear me got in a fight and had got kicked out so oh. <laughs> and this was not the kind of play this it was almost a bar room brawl in the middle of a very quiet little listening room so I guess that might be well wow. one of the weirdest things <laughs> <laughs> Um, boots or heels? Uh, boots. I uh, daily wear my, my Durango's. That's my go-to. Um, favorite drink? Favorite drink. I'm into like hot tea, um, anything with mint or green tea. Um, um, my friend jokes around that since I moved to Nashville, I got fancy and drink hot tea. I'm not a big coffee drinker, so I, I get my caffeine with my tea. I love that. Hot tea's fancy. Yes. I'm fancy. Yes. <laughs> I I'll hold my finger up. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. you, your little cup, your little tea cup in your finger. Yeah. Yeah. Charge it with a mug because you dropped the mug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Today yeah. it's a mug. <laughs> <laughs> so what about alcoholic? Do you drink alcoholic drinks? I do. And it's so weird. My husband and I have just discovered that maybe I haven't alcohol allergy there are certain drinks that i immediately get a migraine when i taste it and i don't know if it's a dehydration thing so lately it's not been a whole lot of alcohol but when i do i like the Michelob ultra lime infusions beer that's really a lot almost like a sprite soft drink tasting oh. kind of beer yeah. i drink that and um 
Uh, probably Tennessee Honey. That's a go-to whiskey if I had to drink that. So. You mean the Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey? Jack, yeah, yeah. Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. Jack. <laughs> ah, there you go. Yeah, I see it now. I didn't notice that. Cool. <laughs> That's cool. Um, what's your favorite holiday? Christmas. <laughs> Absolutely Christmas. It could be Christmas all year. That'd be cool. That'd be very expensive, but it'd be very cool. Very expensive, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite animal? Dogs, I guess, because they're they're the ones that we've got right now. I love horses, but I guess dogs would, would be the number one. That's cool. Okay. If you could add someone to Mount Rushmore, who would it be and why? Someone <laughs> to Mount Rushmore. Hmm. Uh, goodness, that's a hard one. It'd have to be somebody musically, you know, oriented in the music business. Um, probably Aretha. <laughs> <laughs> she just, I don't know, she was such a a fierce woman when she came in in the studio and she's sitting down. I didn't realize till years later, once I discovered her music, she was playing piano parts and stuff like that that were just off the charts and super talented. So probably Aretha Franklin. She got there really well. Okay, what, what is your first, yeah, yeah. What was your first concert? My first concert was Reba McIntyre and Sawyer Brown. <laughs> I love Reba. Yeah, Re redheads do not love Reba. <laughs> Definitely. What's your favorite color? Red. Always has been. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best thing since sliced bread? The best thing since sliced bread is frozen blackberries with almond milk on it. That's good. <laughs> there you go. If you could talk to anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and what would you want to talk about? Casey Bethard, and I would just beg him to please write a song with me. <laughs> He's my favorite songwriter. And I've just been, like I said, I'm in Eric Church mode and Jay Joyce, the production, and most of those songs were written by Casey Bethard, and he's just a beast. Um, that's who I would want to talk to. Wonderful. So if you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? Probably, uh, I literally have had every job from a school bus driver to a cake cake decorator. I've worked as a nursing assistant. I've literally covered all the bases. So if I was not doing this, I'd probably live in a cabin in the woods and be self-sufficient. <laughs> <laughs> Just homestead and never leave. So. <laughs> and all the other jobs, I know what they're like. <laughs> I love that. If you ever do that, let me know. I'll come visit you. <laughs> Absolutely. I want, I want like a thousand acres and just be smack dab right in the middle of it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so if you were a Disney character, what character would you be? Ariel, the little mermaid. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Chocolate. Well, Rocky Road. <laughs> Chocolate's good, but Rocky Road is the top. Yeah. <laughs> What's one of your favorite snacks? Favorite snacks. I'm into apples right now. I could just eat three or four apples a day and just, I love apples and the little green pea snaps the little green snap peas those yeah. are good mm. those are yummy so <laughs> i'm getting hungry already so anyway hypothetically <laughs> if i came to you and said i need to hide a body do you know a good place aladega county alabama where i grew up <laughs> <laughs> i know where to take you <laughs> wonderful i will have you on speed dial should that happen <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would be a good theme song for your life or this moment of your life this moment of my life um my goodness probably i guess my theme song since i've been a kid has been amazing grace it's just been that and his eyes on the sparrow those two are my my kind of theme songs that keep me grounded and just no matter what mood I'm in, I can sing those songs and instantly just have peace. Oh, those are beautiful songs. Yeah. So tell us, what song or album should we listen to before we die? The Jopson Brothers, who is Chris Stapleton and some guys, um, they've got one, um, Barely Alive, that I just kind of was skimming through Spotify and found it. That's really good. And I never dove into the Alison Krauss, Robert Plant 
album that they did. But this weekend I had somebody tell me really, really dive into it and listen to it. So I got to listen to that one before I die too. So. <laughs> that would be a good one. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. The last question. Who is your favorite CWC host? Cat's name. <laughs> it's Tigger. Tigger. Tigger is the one. <laughs> it's so not fair. The cat gives more votes than we do. Yes, yes she does. <laughs> I think at the end of the season, it's going to be the winner, the best CWC host is going to yeah. be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, she made her appearance. I, I knew she was coming in to get the spotlight. So, <laughs> Absolutely. That's her. <laughs> she so. always takes the spotlight. So I think Paula's freezing now. This is, this is a wonderful know. freezing day, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're waiting for her to unfreeze, tell, mm -hmm. tell me, what does uh, the rest of this year look like for you? Obviously, you're doing a lot of songwriting. Um, mm -hmm. So you're going to keep that up? Or are you going to do any performing or release some of your own stuff or what's happening? Yeah. I am, I'm starting to pick up more gigs and start performing as everybody um, in the music business is starting to just get back on the road and get back into the swing of things. And a lot of my artist friends that I write with are either busy touring or recording. So the, the writing just kind of naturally slows down around this time of year. And I'll focus more on being a, a writer a little bit too. So. I do have some exciting cuts coming up. Um, Drake White is one of my favorite artists and he's, we've written about seven or eight songs that I'm just in love with. And he's going to be releasing two of those very soon. So. Wonderful. I know I was yeah. catch, I caught one of your uh, songs on uh, your website today and it was <laughs> uh, behind the guitar. I'm in love with yeah. that. I just want you to know. I, I oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that so much. I appreciate it. That's another one of those that just kind of hit me in about three minutes and I wrote it down and, um, I got the idea from a friend named Van Brown and he, we had this song behind this guitar that we'd started writing and it just never got finished, never got to it. And then I wrote that song and when it came time, I didn't know what hook I was writing toward. It was just one of those. I was just writing and writing and writing as it came to me and it got time for me to write the hook and it was behind this guitar and I was like, I got to call Van. And then we took it to my friend Gabe Allen and he just kind of helped tweak and, and push it in the places it needed to go. And so. But that's one of my faves too. Thank you for, for listening to that. Perfect. I love that. Very, very cool. Thank you. Paul's officially unfroze if anyone didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yes. I was in there. I was in there. I was in there. So I have to ask, what was it like being the open act for Sugarland? Um, that was huge. That was earlier in my career, and I had just started doing solo acoustic acts. So I was scared to death and it was at the Oak Mountain Amphitheater in Birmingham. I think it's called the Verizon Amphitheater now it's changed hands and stuff, but that was one of the first shows that I saw Sugarland perform at and they, it was energetic. It was just like nothing else. It was awesome. Wonderful. I love Sugarland. I think they're amazing. So yeah. Yeah. Jennifer mm -hmm. Nettles is just outstanding. Isn't she? So, she is. And just that personality and that smile just is infectious. She's, yeah. 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 She seems like she'd be a pretty cool hang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just seems to enjoy life. Yeah. You know, isn't yes. It? So cool. Absolutely. Yeah, which is very, very good. That's how it should be. Yeah, I agree. But uh, no, this has been fun, even with me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've enjoyed this. Thank you again for reaching out to me and allowing me to be a part of it. I always love talking about my music and getting to talk with other songwriters and people that love music. So. Perfect. No, thank you very much for joining us. It's been, uh, yeah. it's been fun and uh, it's been great to get to know your music and everything. So, yeah. Thank you. And you're I'll welcome back that. anytime. Yes. Uh, absolutely. I'll come back anytime. <laughs> That was good to me. <laughs> well, you ladies have a good rest of your afternoon. And if you need, ever need anything or if I can help do anything, just holler at me. I'd love to, to help out. Sounds good to us. If you enjoyed today's episode of Crazy Women Country, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Be sure to click the subscribe button for new interviews weekly. And thank you, friends, for joining us today on Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter.